Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today one of our subscriber, Chandrasekhar Pulpaka, has interested to share his knowledge on Pega rule resolution. Thanks a lot Chandra. You can proceed ahead. Hello everyone, this is Chandra. Today we are going to discuss about Pega rule resolution algorithm. First of all, thanks Krishna for giving this opportunity. So let's quickly jump into the concept. So before uh, discussing about rule resolution algorithm, so first of all, let's discuss about the rule. So what is a rule? So if you take a Pega application, so it's not a single entity. It's a combination and the design and development of multiple rules which defines its behavior. So rule is a building block of a Pega application. For example, if you take an application which has a UI like first screen or a second screen and th like that. So uh, the screen you see is uh, built of different components like sections, harnesses and layouts etc. So if you take a section it's a uh, kind of a rule that's related to UI category and there is also some rules which helps in processing the data and which helps in building the business logic so those are sort of all rules that are existed in the application so basically rule is an instance or a copy of rule type which defines its behavior so there are different different types of rule types so whenever you create any new rule just creates an instance of rule type which is called rule to remember it building components building blocks of an application simply in pega we have number of rules like uh, which are related to different categories for example if you see user interface we have sections skins portals paragraphs navigation if you open process related rules we have uh, validate ticket state skill flow if you take decision we have decision data decision table decision tree declare expression so these are all basically rules rule types if you open section section is a rule type and these are all the instances of section which are section rules if you open a section so this is a section and this is of type section rule type for example if i create a new section if you see it's saying create section for example to understand it in better way every rule is an instance of rule obj of type relevant type for example if you see these are all the classes we have available of rules so rule is also a type of class you can say rule type is a class and rules are its instances for example rule obj section or rule obj flow rule obj flow so rule obj flow is a flow type class if you open the instances of this you can see all the flow rules available in the application so that's how it is so this is these are all called rules and these are all being used when you run an application when you implement an application so let's get back to the concept guys i hope you got an idea what is rule and how it is being used and what how many types of rules are there in the application and for every rule uh, you, you can see there is a label called availability here available you see this right availability so we can see five types of availability options available not available blocked final withdrawn so when it comes to the concept so before uh, jumping into rule resolution this is uh, we have to know about rule availability and these are all the types of rule availability state so a rule can be an available not available like for example when prpc pega prpc tries to call a rule at runtime when you run something in pega application tries to find a rule in this in its rule cache or rule base so it goes into the rule base and search for a rule for example in this case let's say py channel edit is a rule so when it is referred in somewhere in the ui pega prpc tries to find this rule by going into rule cache so using three parameters it tries to find it so using data channel configuration class using it class using rule set version and using its id and once it finds it it verifies for rule availability whether it's available not available block withdrawn or final if you set the availability status to available it is it will be executed so there is no blockers like if you if the prpc calls this uh, section rule without any hurdles without any uh, obstructions just executes in a simple manner but what if it is uh, set to not available so if we set the availability status to not available there it comes in a regular development usually developers set the availability status to not available when they want to stop the execution of a specific rules rule version for example in the in this in this application if you take the versions of this rule there are there is only one let's take which has multiple 
versions for example let's say in our application we have three rules of three versions so let's say in this example uh, there is a rule called create request of three versions 02101 020105 and 10. so in this case as a developer i want to keep the execution of rule create request of 02101 one zero. So in this case, I'll set the availability of the specific rule to not available so that I can skip that version. So when I set that availability status to not available, so immediately it will execute the next highest version in the rules. Immediately it will execute the next highest version in the rules stack. So this is how it behaves when you set the status to not available. So let's discuss about withdrawn. So withdrawn is uh, another type of availability status. And when you set the status of the rule to withdraw for example if you open this section yeah this is how we set the status to withdraw and if you save it yeah the status is set to withdraw now. so for example uh, if you take this create request of multiple versions for like 020101 020105 02101 of different classes so the one rule can be in different classes with the different versions as well so if you set the status to withdrawn same version and the remaining versions in the rules stack will be ignored in the execution so when pickup erpc refers this rule at runtime so it, it tries to uh, find the rule using class and the rule name and uh, rule set version and once it finds once the status of the uh, availability is set to withdraw that rule and the remaining rules in the rule set stack where the rule set version is less than the main rule are all ignored in the execution on if there are any rules with highest version or higher version in withdrawn rule then it will be executed the remaining all the subsequent lower versions of the rules will be skipped during execution when the rule resolution algorithm works only this rule will be executed which is in bold because that is the highest version above the withdrawn rule the rule withdrawn here and the, all the subsequent rules are ignored why not the remaining rules because those are related to different classes those are created those are of different classes if you take tgb and tgb purchasing work we are not using them only we are trying to refer tgb purchasing work purchase request which are these four rules and when the set status is set to withdrawn only those set of rules are ignored because they are belong they belongs to purchase request class because we set the second highest version of the rule to withdraw all the remaining versions are ignored except the highest version after the withdrawn rule this is how the withdrawn works and blocked similar to withdrawn available and not available there is a there is a status called block when you set the rule stat availability status to block it will simply block the rule from execution go to the example you can understand it clearly in this example this is the rules stack so we have create request rule in three versions 0102 if you set the status of uh, 02110 availability to blocked then during execution it will be blocked if you run that rule it will throw an error you can refer that rule uh, you can copy and edit you can do any manipulations on that but if you execute that rule it will throw an error saying the rule is blocked see that if in the following table the availability of the highest version of the rule is named create request 0102110 rules it is blocked so in during the run time if we specifically execute this rule it won't run actually it will just throw an error saying this rule has been blocked if there are any next highest versions those will be executed if not if there is only one rule available in the stack then it will throw an error saying this rule is blocked so this is used when you have a pending development work to do in that rule for example if you are designing a flow and you don't want to execute that or for example if you are working on a section for instance if you take this example this is a section rule if you are doing some changes in the section and you don't want to reflect those changes to another mining application or any other developers then you set this status to blocked and then you work and then set the availability status to available and then just check in 
so that during the execution of the remaining rules your rule won't be picked when we left for left with final so final is the availability status that will be called every time uh, but this is only limited to pega platforms usually pega platform apis or activities only can be set to final so the rules marked with final can be viewed and executed in dev studio but cannot be edited or copied into another rule set so these cannot be modified so these are like a standard set of uh, rules that are given by pega pega prp so when the stat availability of the rule set to final then we can execute it we can call it wherever we want but it cannot be modified or copied into another rule sets or saved into our application so basically pega platform uses these types of rules find bunch of rules with status as final availability status set to final you can try modifying them and copying them with rules but it won't execute the modified versions it just executes the uh, final versions of it so yeah this is the rule availability and we discussed what is rule and its rule availability statuses and version and non version so in pega as i have shown you already pega rules contain in version Th there are non version rules as well in pega which are like applications classes rule sets access groups work group work baskets and some other configurations which are specific to and apart from those type of rules remaining all rules are version for example whatever the rule you create it start at 01001 and then whenever you modify that rule it goes till 01102 1013 and major minor and uh, patch versions so usually as we already discussed the highest version of the rule will be executed at runtime and the lower lowest version lower versions of the rule will be ignored at runtime until you set the status of the highest version to not available or blocked so these are these two are the main such criteria parameters used in rule resolution algorithm we've been talking about rule resolution algorithm what is that so it is simply the algorithm that is being used by pega prpc when you search or refer any rule or any specific rule from the in the runtime the search of the rule works in this way this looks a bit complex so i just simplified this image this rules resolution algorithm into a simplified mode version um, if you see uh, when any rule is being referred at runtime so first of all the pick up erpc engine tries to search the rule in cache using rule id class and rule set version so once it finds that or if it doesn't find it goes to rule database rule base we can call it as rule base and there it tries to find the best match there using the three parameters again rule id class and rule separation so pega prpc goes to the class for example if it is a section type it goes to rule base section instances and there again it tries to use the class of which it is belongs to tries to get all the instances of which, which belongs to that class and then filter with rule id and then filter with, filter with that rule by rule situation and then once it finds and it checks for an availability if it is available or withdrawn or blocked or not available or if it is final so if it is available it straight away uh, jumps into next steps of evaluation or if it's not available then it skips the specific version that we that it finds and executes the next highest version available in the rules stack if it is nothing available then it just simply ignores the execution of that rule and if it is withdrawn will be skipped and all the rules in the lower versions of the withdrawn rule will be skipped and the highest rule above the withdrawn rule will be executed so i'm just repeating again guys if you withdrawn any rule again with an example for example we have this stack if you withdraw on the rule and then that rule including the subsequent rules below that rules version like with the less rules version number will be ignored the rules are, the rule will be executed that ha that is above the withdrawn rule i mean in the rules version that is greater than the uh, rules version of the withdrawn rule so at runtime these rules will be ignored and the rule with status available above the rule withdrawn rule will be executed that's how it works and as we already discussed about uh, final so final is a standard availability status available in pega where we cannot modify or copy but it will be executed 
once you set it to final you cannot modify that or we cannot change it into change the code within that but it will be executed guys and one more left which is blocked when you set the status of the rule to blocked at runtime if it is found uh, prpc will accept it i mean if it, if it, it considers it but it won't execute that rule if the status set to block pega prpc ignores that rule from executing executing at runtime so it won't be executed if pega prpc tries to execute that rule an error will be thrown into the logs and the execution will be halted over there so yeah once the availability status is set to available then it just jumps into the next set of ver ver verification which is circumstancing so it verifies if there are any circumstances of the rule then it will try to verify whether it is valid circumstancing rule or not and then if there are any valid circumstances then it tries to execute that one instead of the base version so considering there are no any circumstances it will execute the base rule then the last step of uh, verification in the rule resolution is authorization rule to the user so it verifies whether that rule is accessible to user or not for example it uses some set of parameters like access group and the rule set and the application if that rule is included in the rule set is the rule set is added in the application and that application is included in the operator id or not so these sort of verifications pega prpc does and then once it is clean and the uh, the rule is accessible to the user then it executes that rule at runtime so these all steps are common for each and every rule that at runtime when you execute any rule at runtime so all of these steps will be executed and then all of these steps will be verified and then it will be picked at runtime to execute so that's how it works guys that's it for today guys thank you